Hello guys, this is One Who Said Malicious, with our scene 12, another chapter of dueling like a swordsman, this is part where we're going to be covering some advanced tips, like side deck, and some pro moves you can do with your Xabers in case you're in a tight spot. Alright, let's begin with side deck, this is, I'm going to show my personal side deck, um, begin with, of course, and Sorry the Darkness. I used to play this main deck, but right now I use too many traps, so I put this in the side deck. I usually side deck this against plants or decks that do mass destruction overall, like Mirror Match or something like that, like Sabres that leave me with no cards in the back row. So usually when I run out of monsters, I just play this and get some advantage. Really good card overall. It always has been, so yeah, just use it. Kinetic Soldier. I run two. Uh, some people run three. I use this against Six Sams and um, Hero Beat. Really great card. Really, you know, it's like sometimes I even consider it better than Spirit Reaper or our even our own Pashul because it really, really stops face and can then like turn the tables back if they don't have proper protection like Deep Risen. So yeah, I really recommend you using this. Very, very, very great card. Bottomless Trap Hole, I used to main deck this, now I don't. I no longer main deck this because almost all decks in the meta have monsters that are below 1500. But this card really becomes live when going against Grave Keepers, Dragoon Tees, um, and Gladiator Beast. Really great card. Uh, takes those threats out of the way, so yeah, I, I wouldn't go about it. Noble Man of Crossout, really great card on the mirror match, really great card against great keepers. Um, it can even help plants in some way since they set a lot of recos and stuff. So yeah, you this card is really good. I right now right now only run one because a lot of people are already, you know, this used I used to run like three of these back then. Like a lot of people were not like uh, too conscious about this, but right now they already they know this card is coming so they start playing differently they start putting cards face up instead of face down and so I've only used one now at the, um, it's basically just for mirror match and grave keepers and plants maybe like a couple of times really card really great card still so I, I really suggest you put one at least, at least one in your side deck then we got royal oppression some use it main some use it side I use this side deck. Um, I use this side deck against mirror match and very special summon heavy decks like plants and quick draw. It's a really, really powerful card. Really devastates these these decks. Like seriously, like you know, you play plants or Tengu or whatever the hell is going on that special summons like crazy. Summon this card. You can basically just extend your hand and shake. <clears throat> Cyber Dragon. You'd be surprised that Machina, or Machina, or Machina, whatever you want to call it, is not is not the only one you're going to be using Cyber, Cyber Dragon against. I've used this against almost all kinds of decks. I've used this against Grave Keepers to run over their 2,000 monsters, and it really, really catches them off guard. I, I've, I use them to, like, bait out some warnings, because, you know, a 2,100 attack instant monster, level 5, by the way, really great card to synchro into it it's kind of annoying you know it, it, and that's you a lot of field advantage i've used this against um gladiators to since they you they also use cyber dragon so i basically steal their cyber dragon and go into chimera tech or i just run over like wari and just yeah a lot of people are not using wabaku right now so yeah this card is really powerful right now i wouldn't i wouldn't restrict it just for plants i would use it for other stuff too Bomb was already discussed. It. Gossam match, Gossam match, or Gozen match, or however you want to call it. Really, really powerful card. This card devastates some decks, like especially plants. They run like several things. You gotta see the faces of people when you play Gossam match. They play Dandelion, then they're like, "I destroy Dandelion." Oh, I, you can't play. Or, or they go like, "Oh, Debris Dragon," and then like, Gossam match. You can't summon that Dandelion. Oh well. Yeah, this, this card is really good, especially Xavers, and Xavers are all Earth monsters, so yeah. I really, highly, highly recommend using this card. 
Like it's it's really powerful. Uh, it, I I totally shut down a lot of Tengu decks and um, a lot of like decks that run multiple uh, attributes in the in the same deck. This even prevents synchros. Like example, they have uh, two Earth monsters, but they want to go into a Bryonic. They can't go into a Bryonic, you know, because this card just won't allow it. It's in the rulings. It just won't allow another attribute to come in. This card is going to be really good against elemental heroes when they come in on um, Generation 4. So I really would suggest you keep this in your side deck for those matches. Gemini Imps. I, I just wanted to make a random mention about this card here. I, I use it against Wraith Keepers, um, against their dreaded Royal Tribute. But it was back then when it was at 3. Now that it's at 2, it's like... It's not so powerful. And if it gets limited in the next ban list, well, whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, Gemini Imps is actually a really good card to use against Royal Tribute. It nets you advantage, and it saves your it saves your X Sabers from other destruction. So yeah, I don't know if you if you have your locals or your regionals are very Gravekeeper heavy, then I suggest you get like at least two of these and put them in your side deck. Some that didn't appear here are Puppet Plant and um, Closed Forest. But, you know, Puppet Plant is really good against Samurai. Um, Closed Forest is against Dragonity Team Grave Keepers. And Thunder King Rile. Some people play Thunder King, although I really don't suggest it. Thunder King is just used when you're in mirror match and you already have control of the game so you're like you're basically on stage three of your gameplay but it's a very very risky card and it demands a lot of skill now before i run out of time I'll, let's go to some advanced plays here uh really quickly um some people don't know that hyunlei can activate its effect outside of the field so example you play hyunlei they then your opponent answers with uh effect later or answers with skill drain, you can use torrential tribute or compulsory evacuation device, which I have around here. To or even at the you can even use like Book of Moon. You can use Book of Moon to like turn it face down, turn it to the hand, or send it to the graveyard so it can activate its effect, destroy three threat cards face down, and net you a lot of advantage. A lot of people actually don't know that and yeah that's a very pro move. And if, in case they ask you that, well, you don't have to fear. Just you, just, just do it and just say that its effect is activating outside of the field. So in other words, it cannot be targeted by those effects. Another thing that a lot of people don't know is about Fall Knight. Fall Knight um, can activate its effect immediately when it's destroyed. So, for example, if you have if you if your opponent has a Rico face down, you have a target in the graveyard, say Pashul or an Emerus Blade, or even another Full Knight, maybe a Dark Soul, you can go ram into, into Rico, Rico destroys you, yet you still get to activate the effect and get to revive that Emerus Blade and just keep attacking. It's really, 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 really nice trick, something that a lot of people don't know. I even, even I include myself in this. I found out about that like two weeks ago, and I wanted to share it with everybody. It's a really, really nice move, very pro move. I, it actually, if you go against some pros, when you summon Fallen Knight, they might actually just warning the Fallen Knight, knowing that you're going to just revive another target when you dispatch the Rico. So, yeah, very powerful move right there. <clears throat> and basically, oh yeah, Gotham Seacall before this video ends. Yeah, Gotham Seacall, a lot of people don't know that Gotham Seacall can be used against the opponent. So yeah, if you if your opponent has a face of Xavier, you can activate your Gotham Seacall. You can even activate your Gotham Seacall and chain to a, your opponent's Gotham Seacall and disrupt their swarm. So yeah, you gotta keep that in mind. Really nice play to do. And yeah, that basically covers some advanced tips in you know, dealing with Xavier's and so yeah, I'm gonna leave that. That's all the videos for now. Anything new comes up, I'll just make a new video about it. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed all these videos so far. And till next time, guys.